So now I want to cover the final subject, and that's going to be lerping. We can use lerping to fade in and out volumes, pitches, whatever we want. Say you want the audio of the hum to fade out to zero over about one second, you use lerping to do that. So let's look at that. That's going to be in our audio manager script. First we need to create a new overload for the stop sound function. Uh, this is going to make it so that we can use stop sound to stop a sound right out without a fade and then use an the same stop sound function to put a fade on if we want. So we're going to do public void stop sound pyramid. And its arguments this time are going to be similar. We're going to have a string called sound to stop name. And we're also going to have a length of fade, which is going to be a float. And that's all we need. So now we do game object sound to stop object is set to game object dot find. Sound to stop name. Ah, there was an error up there. Great. So at this point, I want to point out that in some game scenarios, using gameobject.find is very inefficient, and programmers will want you to do something else. At that point, that's when you want to work with a programmer to find a better solution. But for our purposes, this works perfectly well. Now we need to do the actual fade out. So we need to start a coroutine that's going to fade out the volume over a length of time. So before we can start the coroutine, we need to create it. So we're going to come down here a little bit and make a coroutine I enumerator fade out. And it's going to take two arguments. The first argument we need is the name of the sound we're going to stop. So that is going to be a string called sound to stop name. The second argument is going to be the length of the fade that we want. So that's going to be a float, and we're going to call it length of fade. So now in our code block, we're going to do game object sound to stop object is set to game object dot find set to game object dot find sound to stop name. And now we have to do something a little special. We have to change the name so that if there are multiples of the same sound playing, it doesn't stop the incorrect one and have the other ones keep playing. We're going to use sound to stop object dot name plus equals in quotations fading out. Now the plus equals is the same as saying sound to stop object dot name is set to sound to stop object dot name plus fading out. We want to use the previous name, but append something to it. So we use plus equals as a shorthand. Next we're going to get the audio source that we're actually trying to stop. So audio source, we're going to call it sound audio source is set to sound to stop object dot get component of type audio source
now we can really start. So first we want to keep track of the time that we started fading out. So we're going to create float start time is set to time dot time. That means the current time that we are in this frame. Now we have to create a while loop. We say while and this loop will run as long as the conditions in these parentheses are true. So we'll say while start time plus length of fade is greater than time dot time. And what that's saying, as long as the stop time that we have recorded plus the length of fade, so if it's one second, as long as that is greater than the current time, then we'll execute this code. After one second is up, it's going to be the opposite. The start time plus the length of fade is going to be less than the current time, so it's not going to run the code. So what this is saying is as long as the recorded start time plus the length of the fade, say one second, is greater than the current time in the game, we'll run this code. As soon as that time has elapsed, then the start time plus the length of the fade will actually be less than the current start time because it's in the past. So now inside our code block, we're going to create a float called current fade time. We're going to set it to 0f. Then we're going to set it to time dot time minus start time. Next, this is where the magic happens. This is the lerp. So we're going to set the sound audio source volume, sound audio source dot volume to mathf dot lerp. Lerp takes several arguments. The first argument is the from variable. We're lerping from something. The second argument is the to variable. We're lerping to a value. The third argument is by how much. So the third argument is really what's going to be changing over time. By how much uh, is going to drive the volume down in increments every frame. So first we're going to say we're going to, going to lerp from sound audio source dot volume, meaning whatever volume it's currently at. 2, 0, F. So we're going to lerp it all the way down to 0. And we're going to lerp it by current fade time divided by the length of fade. Then we're going to yield return null. All coroutines need a yield in there somewhere. Now we write the code that happens after the fade stops. So we do sound to stop object dot get component, get the audio source, dot stop. So this stops the sound after it finishes fading out. Now we need to destroy the object. Destroy sound to stop object. Now we're almost done. All we need to do is go back into the light bulb script and when we go into the stop sound peer mind function where we're stopping our light hum clip we need to add one more parameter to get it to use the fade out. And that is the length of the fade. So let's go ahead and just do one for one second. Now we're calling the correct stop sound function. 
but we still need to call the fade out coroutine from our second stop sound pure mind method. So we're going to write out start coroutine. fade out, and it takes the sound to stop name, which is sound to stop name, and then it takes the length of the fade, which we know from here it's length of fade. Now when we play the game, you should hear the sound of the light humming fading out over about one second when you turn the lights off. There you go. Thanks for watching. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.